Hello everyone, this is Damon with Easy Green Screen, and for this tutorial I'm going to be discussing what to do in the situation where you have some green spill on the skin or green reflections from the screen. And before we get started, I just want to mention that it's always best to try to avoid this situation. Um, as a general rule, the smaller your screen is, so if you make it more narrow, you're not going to have those angles of reflection to bounce from the screen to the sides of the face, but there are times when it's unavoidable and you'll have a patch of skin that's got some green in it. And let's just sample here so we can see the color that we're dealing with. And if you look, our hue is 82. So this is in the green to greenish yellow spectrum. And as we get further into the skin, you see the hue is normal. It's in the um, low 20s, which is typically where skin hue is but those reflections, those are low 80s. And so when your hue gets that high, there's two things that can happen. First, you'll get spill, and then you can also get those areas to where they're partially extracted. And it's pretty simple to fix this. So I'm just going to start out by doing a dual mask ex extraction. And I like to do dual mask typically when I'm working with a situation like this because um, I often want to use the foreground recovery and you don't want to apply that in the hair region. So if you run dual mask, the foreground recovery only applies outside of the hair region. I'm just going to demonstrate here. And when running dual mask, by the way, you can lasso before you select it in the Photoshop menu. Or if you don't pre-lasso it, it'll prompt you to lasso it. So let's just um, let's put this against solid white. And I think that'll show a little bit better the area that I want to discuss. And you see right there, we're seeing through to the background a little bit. That area is partially transparent. And I'm going to show you how we can um, correct for that. I'm going to go into the uh, key and mask settings. And I'm going to use this foreground recovery slider. I'll just turn that up until I see that transparency go away. And also you can see in here, we've got this contract mask. You can see it's contracted by a pixel to try to chop the halo off. I'm just going to turn that off for this image because I don't think we need it in this particular image. And I like the way that edge looks here. And both of these adjustments, by the way, do not happen to the hair region. It only happens to the areas outside of the hair region. And whenever I use um, this foreground recovery very strong, I like to usually put the mask feathering up to around half pixel, maybe even a full pixel. And that just softens the edge because this foreground recovery can make the edge a little bit hard. So now you see our spill correction. It's trying to work, but it's not really fully correcting for that. So what we're going to do is go into our spill correction and there's two adjustments when you get spill on the skin that you'll want to adjust. And the first thing is the spill color range warms. This is the range of colors that the spill correction targets. And when we're in dual mask, we've got the hair region and the non-hair region. So this is the same adjustment being applied, but it just applies it in two areas. So that area we lassoed around the hair, that's controlled by this hair region. And the rest of the image is controlled by the non-hair region. If you were in single mask, you would only have one adjustment for this. So I'm going to turn this all the way down. And you can see some of that spill comes back. And let's look at the original here. And then back at um, the image against the background. And you can see that with this turned all the way down, it doesn't do much. So as we turn this up, this is the default value of 45 in the non-hair region. And it's starting to correct for the um, spill. But if we turn this up, I'll just go up to around 80. And you can see that does a much better job of correcting for the spill. And all that is doing is targeting a wider range of colors. Because you remember when we were sampling, we had the color of or the hue of 80, and that gradually shifted to the hues in the 20s. It's basically the range of hues that this spill correction is targeting. Now you have to be careful when you go all the way up to 100. 
think I do see it happening here. Let's see. Now you see a little bit where it starts to affect the color of this uniform. Just a little bit. And that's because if you go too high on this, you are targeting a wider range of colors for the spill correction to target, and so it's going to hit a wider range of hues. So generally, you don't need to go any higher than 80 for skin tones, and there's still maybe not quite enough spill correction. We can also then increase the overall amount of spill correction. You got to be careful on this opacity. If you go too high, you want to look at the image as a whole. If you start to see um, areas in the hair or the skin that start shifting that shouldn't, um, then you got to be careful with these two, both these adjustments going too high on them. But I'll just back off to about 70 here. I think overall that looks pretty good. I'm just going to um, look at the image as a whole here. And I, I think that looks all right. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, apply this and I'll show you in Photoshop how we can further optimize this spill correction. Okay, now we're in Photoshop and what Easy Green Screen does is it applies the spill correction in a separate layer above the foreground. So if we turn this off, you can see our spill is still there. And we can also turn our foreground mask off and you can see we've got the original image here. So Easy Green Screen does not actually erase your image. It applies a mask. In the foreground layer, nothing actually gets changed to the color of this foreground layer. Um, so we've got our mask here and then our spill correction here. And so the difference between that spill correction opacity and the spill color range is the spill correction opacity, that is the opacity of this layer. That's how much of this layer that's being applied, um, in, or j basically just the opacity of this layer. And this layer blends in color mode and it's blending a color gradient back into the image. Now the spill color range warms that's setting up this map on how the spill correction is applied. So where it's white, it's getting full spill correction. Anywhere it's a grayscale, it's getting partial. And, um, and you can even see into the hair, when we turn that spill color range warms up, um, it starts affecting a, a few more areas because that value of 80 we used was pretty high. But it's very, very subtle, and I don't think we'll notice it in the overall composition. If we had left it at 45, then these areas would be completely black and they'd be getting no spill correction applied. But like I say, I think that's pretty subtle what it did. And if we turn the layer off and on, you really don't see any colors shifting in this um, shirt, but you do see it being corrected in the skin. So the one last thing we can do, if all else fails, we've got a manual spill correction layer. Now this is clipped to the transparency of your foreground mask. It's set to color blend mode, and by default the opacity is 50%. So if you want to manually touch color up in your image, it's really simple. You just grab the brush, and I'm holding the Alt key down or Option on Mac, and you can click anywhere in the image, and you're setting the foreground color to where you selected. And when I do this, I like to use a pretty soft brush because you don't want to see any harsh transitions of color. Um, but then what you'll do is you'll simply just brush over the areas you want to touch up. And you're blending color back in to the image. So even in this cheek there, there was some subtle, um, almost a desaturation where the green blended and it kind of desaturated the skin color a bit. But by blending this in, you can see the color looks a little more natural. And then you could, of course, alt again and select a color and then scale your brush down and try to fine tune. And if you see that it doesn't look as good um, where you're painting, you can control Z to undo that and just go around and um, just do that until you find a color that you think blends well in each area. You can also change the opacity of this layer so you notice if I turn this up, we've got more of that blending 
and if you turn it down, you've got less. And usually around 50%, 50 to 70 somewhere is usually where I use it. And also if you um, paint over into an area you don't want, since this is in a different layer, all you have to do is um, grab your eraser tool and then um, go into that area and you can brush off that spill correction and you can see what, what I was talking about here where that area looks a little bit desaturated that was because when the green mixed with the skin color those two colors mixed and made that um, desaturated color so again you can erase that effect back off if you want to start over with it try to find a color that and one thing too I'll point out is um, it's usually best to use a I was doing a point sample and I think that's why the colors I was selecting weren't working as good right off the bat because if you use a straight point sample if you have noise in your image at all each individual pixel can vary quite a bit but if you do an average then you're taking um, an average of like a 5x5 five five sample and then you're getting a better uh, color or more consistent when you're grabbing the color and I think that actually works pretty good so um, now you can see we're painting and we're brushing off that desaturation. Now you got to be careful too because if you paint over into areas you don't want like this um, shirt for instance you can see it's pretty subtle because it's sort of the same color but if we paint down in here on this this white shirt you can see that um, if you're not careful um, in other areas you'll change the color so like I say to undo that just grab your eraser and erase while you're in that layer to undo that anyway that's pretty simple overall I think that looks pretty good I hope you learned something and if you're interested at all in easy green screen please be sure to visit our website that is easygreenscreen.com